Hello, everyone. Um, I'll be watching the questions in the Q&A. So uh, ideally, actually, if you put them there, that would be the best spot for us. Uh, welcome. Uh, very cool if you were on the last one to, to see Terrence's NSA presentation. Um, but I want to welcome you to ours. Uh, this is the open source journey of the most unlikely participant in the history of history itself. Um, we are Katarina Rindi, the um, community head of, director of community, uh, open source community at G Research. And, uh, and I'm Alex Gammon, head of the open source department at G Research. And what is G Research? G Research is a quantitative finance research film uh, firm based in London. And we use machine learning, big data, and other tools to predict movements in financial markets. So G Research tackles big questions. Um, and as you can imagine, we are very serious about security and competition in this field. Yeah, and so uh, along those lines, part of the, uh, as Katerina mentioned, we're really focused on security here. So if you come to our offices, it looks something like this. Uh, archers are stationed at all those points along the battlements. If you try and get in, you'll be shot at. You also have to get across the, the moats of lava. Uh, it's very, very serious here. Uh, on an actual real note, uh, we famously, if you walk through our metal detectors and you have a bit too much metal in your shoes, people will give you slippers for the rest of the day until you go home. Um, so it, it really is very, very heavily security minded at this place. And uh, just to give you a, a little more background, just to sort of set up the, the notion that this is a really difficult place to be doing open source work from, um, Here's just a little breakdown of what Katarina and I have to face to just deal with email. There are about three email addresses plus our personal address. Uh, there's an internal only email address. There's an internal external email address. And, and there's an external email address for talking with other outside people. But to compound the problem, you can't actually get to all of the email addresses on any one device that we have. Uh, this is sort of a rough breakdown of what we have to go through to actually get to certain emails. And these email addresses don't really talk to one another. It's all kind of complicated. So just, just take it from us. If this is our email address situation, you can only imagine how hard it is to actually deal with getting code from inside G Research to outside. We have a very complicated system of levers and pulleys, more complicated and complex than I've ever had to deal with at any company before. So this is, we have many more examples, but this is a brief conversation. So take it from us. This is really hard to do. Yet, uh, we're still doing open source. We, we run this team. And uh, so let's take you through how we got there. So understanding how G Research got to that point in 2001, big data wasn't really a thing yet. Uh, that's when G Research was founded. In 2004, Google's MapReduce paper, this was a seminal moment describing how to process big chunks of information. 2005, Hadoop was founded and the term big data was coined. And since then, everything has exploded in that world. So G Research was building everything in-house prior and the technology, the open source work was really passing us by. And in reality, uh, even though G Research started as a very insular and uh, in-house engineering universe, by 2018, when we started this open source team, the reality was that open source software was just in every facet of uh, G Research, from programming languages to op operating systems, you know, all sorts of flavors of Linux. We have any number of monitoring systems that are all the open source uh, options that you would expect. Orchestration layers. We've got Chef. We've got Ansible. You know, everything that you would expect from a normal technical company in 2018 or 2020, we're using those tools and they're all open source. 
And in specific, data science tools that we rely upon are more and more open source. Um, so given this backdrop, we realized that we had to change. We had to move from being a bespoke, artisanal, in-house uh, engineering team to actually engage open source software. And we obviously ran across the technical challenges of disconnected devs. You know, we we fork some of the software to try and solve problems internally. And then of course the rest of the, the folks working in that project would pass us by. So that ended up wasting a lot of time on maintenance and code, but we realized that there were other benefits as well. There were financial benefits uh, along the way of we've gained almost, or we've recovered almost, uh, saved $1.07 million in, in financial savings. Um, we've been able to focus much more on our core business by using open source. And we've been able to hire folks. We've become a little more transparent, um, still maintaining our security and hire folks that want to work in open source or our internal software developers that want to contribute to open source. Um, we've been able to, to set that up for them. So these were some things that came up along the way. Thank you, you can go ahead for the next one. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how we were actually able to, to move this company from being the insular uh, uh, backwater that it was. Um, and very fortunately, we had leadership that, uh, that understood this and came to this realization uh, along with the sort of grassroots efforts of the, the engineers, um, which doesn't happen at every company. I, I know that some of uh, us have to fight to get uh, our leadership to, to understand what open source could mean for our companies. But we, we had that. Um, and the, the next step for us was to put this team together and actually put our money where our, where our mouth is and, and hire people, dedicate people to this cause. But not just to uh, contribute code, we, we decided to embrace all facets of open source. There's, there's more to just doing open source than contributing code. There's a whole community and uh, multiple, many multiples of communities that we have to uh, foster and, and, and help. So whether that's running meetups, uh, hosting meetups, writing blog posts, writing articles, uh, you, there, there are a number of different ways that we have our team engaging in the open source world. Um, the, and the last piece of how we worked to make this happen is internal to GB Search. There were still a, a lot of people who were very, very security minded, and really, it's it was a process to win over um, the skeptics within GB Search to to make it clear that open source software had a place at G Research and that we were going to get amazing value from contributing and, and benefiting from it. Um, and we could do so without actually uh, damaging our security. So those are, the, those are the main steps. And we mentioned some of the challenges that we had. There were other practical considerations that we hadn't quite anticipated, but that came up and uh, we've been able to work with our legal teams, for example, um, teaching them what open source is. Uh, we led a training on that and um, helping them figure out and helping us figure out which open source licenses now our internal software developers can use. And when we are maintaining projects or if we are taking over projects, which open source licenses are still um, jiving with uh, GR Legal. We uh, also worked with the marketing team and the recruiting team, as I mentioned, the savings and finance, and we worked with our internal corporate social responsibility team uh, because we have been giving a lot to back to the open source ecosystem. So there's larger benefits um, that we also hadn't necessarily anticipated, but that have been great and have come along the way. And so what are we actually up to now? There's a lot of, uh, uh, contributions, technical contributions that we're making directly. Uh, we've also, in a certain ca few cases, offered to take over maintainership of some projects, projects that we were using that we could see other community members using, but had lost their uh, the, the attention of the maintainers for whatever reason. Um, and then 
in a certain few cases, we've moved to fill gaps in the open source universe by actually uh, creating projects and making them open source. This, uh, I will say, though, is uh, a form of last resort for us. We prefer to engage with existing communities and existing projects and make them better before just depositing a bunch of code on the open source world. That's just our particular philosophy. Uh, we uh, try and uphold to that. Um, and so th there are just, you know, there, it's not a huge team. There's about 10, maybe 12 members on our team. But over the last year, we've contributed to uh, over 140 uh, open source projects, which is, I think, rather remarkable and, and great uh, that it doesn't take that many people to make a, a meaningful contribution in the world. So uh, that's, by and large, what we're up to. Um, here's oh, here's a, just a list if you want to go through them. Yeah, just a few of the projects that we have worked on. Some of them are big names, OpenStack, Kubernetes. Some of them are smaller. Some of them are projects that we've uh, take, taken over and are maintaining. And if you have any specific questions about some of the tech that we're using there, put those in the Q&A and Alex can help answer, answer those. And really the whole point of this talk is just to communicate what we believe and, and hopefully inspire you. We really do believe that open is the future and this is us, the most isolated company in the universe before two years ago. Uh, and so the, the takeaway is like, if we can do it with our four email addresses and our slippers and our uh, moats of oil burning and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, we believe that you probably can too. And, uh, and we really believe that everyone needs to engage in this. So uh, that's, that's our main takeaway for this. So as since we're here, we'll just put in a plug that we are hiring. If you are interested in working in machine learning and uh, data science, big data, and want to have your own Windsor Castle in London, then check out the uh, G Research jobs posting. And if instead you'd like to work with a smaller team just on the open source stuff, our team is uh, remote. We're all over the world. I think we're in seven countries right now. Uh, we have full-time employees and then part-time contractors, people that work just on specific projects. And uh, we're always looking for contributors um, and people to, to join us. So check out, uh, email us, um, and then you can check out the jobs at the G Research headquarters.